there! Today I'm embarking on quite a different subject. I had a person, I get contacted by people, very nice notes by the way. They give me, ask me questions, give me topics to talk about. And one was my uh, experience dating as a middle-aged man. And of course, I can only give my own experience. Uh, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, and I, I actually, right now I'm writing a book. It's tentatively called 100 First Dates uh, because obviously after I got divorced, I went out on 100 First Dates. And uh, at first, I didn't have a goal. Uh, for it, and actually, uh, and, th and then there was a point where I was like, I was, uh, I was keeping track of it, because what I would do is, if I went out with a woman, I would take a screen cap of her dating profile, so that when I was actually going out to the first date, I could refresh myself on her details, and pay attention, make her important, and have things to talk about. And of course, and you say, well, why don't you just go to the dating profile? Well, there's reasons for that, which I may explain later. Actually, I'll explain it now. One is most dating profiles, they show that you're on, uh, that you're on the site. They show that you've looked at the profile. So if you look at the profile, the other person knows, ding, that you looked them up. And of course, I would want the woman who I was going out on the first date with to have a sense like I was uh, invested or interested and not just a sense of but really actually be invested and interested and that's why of course I took the time and effort to take the screen cap and review it before I actually went out with her. And so I would keep these little file folders and uh, then I got to a point, I got to uh, first date number 84, and um, uh, incidentally, most of the time, I didn't mention that I was counting, and, but there were times where, you know, the, the situation was right, or she, li she literally asked me, how many dates have you been on, and sometimes I would just come out with it and just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm dating... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to a hundred and and they would say oh well what number am I and of course that has that has like bad things to it uh, and so at uh, date 84 that's when I was like well I'm at 84 I may as well make it an even hundred and just just to say that I did it to say to who well at the time I Nobody. I wasn't really talking to anybody about this experience that I was going through. It was very personal. In fact, now it's only many years later that, oh, I might actually make a video about it. And then the other thing is, so number 84, who I had a giant crush on, it was, it was, uh, it, it was pretty bad. She said, she said, that was a red flag that I had dated so many people. And I said, well, what if I told you I had dated only one person before you? She said that would be a red flag too, because how would I know what it is that I wanted? And, and I said, well, how many would be the right amount? And she, and she thought about it for a little bit, and she said, uh, she said 20. 20 would be the right amount. And quite frankly, I thought I would find my long-term person uh, after about 20 or 30 dates. And so when it started getting up there, I was like, oh, what is this all about? What, 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 what am I really doing? And... Of course, uh, my, one of my big ideas that came out of this, one of many, many, many of them, is that uh, you get, th there's a metric, it's called perspective. The more people that you go out with, and the more relationships that you have, the more perspective you have. And in my case, I understood myself better, I understood humankind better, and I dare say I knew women a little bit better. And of course, I make the generalizations uh, excuse me, I make the generalization, women this, women that, but of course, take that with a grain of salt because obviously each person is their own unique person and uh, I'm just looking at it from my perspective. But my perspective is I went out with a lot of women and so uh, that was, uh, I guess, the beginning of it. I was divorced in winter of... 2014-ish. 
So in January, what we wanted to do was, it, it was a, I had been married 20 years. It was uh, uh, what's called a, as you can tell, I'm kind of getting a little, it's a little hard to get through this on camera. Uh, by, by the way, if you've been watching this channel, you've probably never seen me stumble on a topic. Anyway, we wanted to get through the holidays without telling the kids. So January, like I knew for like a year and a half that things were winding down. And we took six months to create what's called a stipulated divorce. That means both parties agree to how it's going to happen and they create a, a, a contract, a divorce document, and then the judge signs off on it. Uh, apparently, in those cases, they rarely interfere with them. And so I was divorced, and it was January 2015. It was a really, really, really hard time for me. Of course, th at that time, I was really, really, really into next level stuff, like positivity, getting my mental state well. So I remember that time in two different ways, as being awesome and also being absolutely awful. And so I had just, I had moved out of my house. I was living in the studio, which you, and you guys could see like a zillion videos. If you go back and you like kind of watch that time, you can see like I'm a little unkempt, I'm a little out of it, and, uh, but I had a company, I had, I still have family uh, and my kids. And I just, I just had to plow ahead with a big old smile on my face. So in January, I started living at the studio. I converted the studio conference room into a bedroom. I actually have pictures of it somewhere. I may, I may end up posting those. Looking back, I'm like, yeah, I was doing a pretty good job. Like, it was in good condition. I wasn't slovenly. I had a plan. I had relatively my act together. And so the first date that I went on, Hold on. I got the date off of Craigslist. Yes, that's right. I didn't know what I was doing. And since, as you may recall, I lived in San Francisco for four years, <clears throat> Craigslist was how you got things done. If you wanted to buy a couch, or you wanted to sell some old records, or you wanted to find a job, literally anything could be found on Craigslist. Like, if you, if you could imagine it, you could get it sorted out on that one uh, very simple website. So I'm like, well, well, Craigslist, Craigslist personals. So I got on there, I got a date, and uh, she was really quite wonderful. Uh, dark hair, dark coffee eyes, and it was really cool. because she, she dressed up for me, we went to a nice place, and, uh, and it was really cool. And that was first and only date, but uh, it proved something to myself which is I could get a date at all. Because at age 45, I didn't know what it was going to be like. I thought it might be like the uh, Chinese buffet at uh, th <laughs> lunch buffet at 3 p.m. Like everything's all picked over, you know? Like it, it would be the dregs. Dregs list. And uh, spoiler alert, it's definitely not like that. And in fact, if I end up making more of these videos, and I would need a little bit of prompting for that, a little bit of interest. Uh, I, it's really directed towards middle-aged men. Of course, now it's eight years later, so people who are middle-aged now may have different experiences uh, than I did. And so I went out on a second date. And this time, it was off of eHarmony. And I didn't know, I was very naive going into this. So first off, I only went on to eHarmony because that's the only one that I had ever heard of. And the fact is, there's different types of dating sites. And I get it. A lot of people watching this will be like, oh, no, duh, Sean. <laughs> this guy doesn't know anything. And you know what? You just got to take it at face value. I'm only giving my experience. And that's it. It's like the zoo. You don't go by the lion enclosure and be like, oh, their necks aren't long enough like the giraffes. No, you just look at whatever it is, red-banded iguana, and that's, that's it. That's you just, whatever that animal is, that's what, that's what you're looking at. How could you be disappointed? It is what it is. Anyway, so I went to eHarmony. Oh, there's different types of websites. There's uh, hookup sites, and then there's marriage sites. And eHarmony is definitely like, if you're serious and you're looking to settle down, the eHarmony is where to go. And I have to say, 
eHarmony is really cool because uh, you get a higher quality of human on there. That like these profiles, it takes a while to make a profile on eHarmony. And then on the other end, you've got, uh, I guess, Tinder, OkCupid. Okay I actually went on OkCupid okay once, and boy, let me tell you, that place is a wreck. Or at the time, this is early on in my experience, I didn't know, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what existed. And uh, the fact is, uh, there's a lot of catfishing. There's ways, there's ways around that to actually find real humans. And so my second date was off of eHarmony. And, and, and looking back at it, I'm like, oh, it's all so obvious now. But uh, she was um, from Taiwan. And let me tell you, this was a great, even though it was short term, it was a great relationship. Absolutely amazing. And I really had genuine feelings for her, and it was and it was really cool. And so, but when I first started speaking with her online, she said, "Hey, I want to go to a Buddhist temple with you." And I was like, "All right, that sounds great. I went in where? Let's let's go." And then she said, "You know what? I changed my mind. Let's do the going out to eat thing that you originally uh, suggested." I'm like, and I, at first I was like a little baffled by that, but now of course it's obvious because that's, uh, that's a little test to see, uh, possibly a cultural test. And, uh, and that's a completely different topic, which is uh, dating across cultures. And then, uh, and then, of course, to see, you know, would I be interested in going to something that was maybe, maybe a little more mundane, personal? Would I, would I be able to uh, go to something that wasn't part of what I was used to? And uh, once she was convinced of that, then it was okay to just move along to, to other activities. And so, uh, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. And uh, I actually did, I, I, got, I went past 100. And it was an amazing experience. It made me grow a lot as a person. And uh, er, early on, I just, I just didn't know what I was doing. I set a goal, uh, but I did set goals. Hold on. Mm. Oh, that's good. Uh, so I set a goal early on to date a woman from every age category. <clears throat> so like uh, early 30s, mid 30s, late 30s. Same thing, early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s. Of course, that would be like a lot younger. And uh, But I was ready to understand the world, and I did it. I managed to go all the way, all the way up to early 60s. And which was at the time, was the thing, which at the time was like maybe 15 or 16 years older uh, than what I was. Is that right? No, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, that's right, about 17 years older. So anyway, all right, well, obviously I could talk about this topic for many, many hours. Uh, like I said, I'm literally writing a novel about it right now. And uh, I'm not very far in. I'm only to 9,000 words. That's like a tenth of the way through. Uh, but I do have it fleshed out. Like I have the chapter headings all fleshed out. I just need to sit down and type. I'm a fast typer. I'm sure I'll be able to get through it pretty quick. And um, so uh, the, one of the main ideas that I've talked about here is perspective. Every single date that I went on made me a little bit wiser and it gave me perspective about myself so I could know what it is that I wanted in a relationship and to understand other people and to understand myself. All right, well, that's all I gotta say about that. Uh, that's, I guess, my, my little teaser. And um, hopefully, I, I'm gonna turn off the comments for this video. Uh, it's a sensitive topic. I don't just want uh, the inexperience to blurt out whatevers. So, but you know, you know how to contact me. There's a, there's a, uh, an email in the liner notes, and I'm glad if you approach me. I'm glad to uh, elaborate on topics. And in fact, uh, you know, I'm just going to put this out there right now. Um, if you would like to be on a little mailing list, because I may make these videos, but not want them to be for general consumption. Uh, send me your email. Say, put me on the email list. I won't harass you about it. Uh, and if it gets to 10 people, I'll start making things and, and sending, them, sending them out. All right, thanks for tuning in.